I'm Chris Duke. And this is Truck Walk TV. These days, everyone's got a cell phone, an MP3 player, satellite radio, and a portable GPS unit. But wouldn't it be cool if someone would combine all these great technologies into one? Well, Alpine Electronics has done exactly that. It's called the Alpine IVA W505 Multimedia Station. and allows their Blackbird GPS unit to be docked inside, as well as to connect to your cell phone via Bluetooth. It also allows you to use satellite radio, play your MP3 player, your DVD movies, and everything else. Today on Truck Blog TV, we're going to show you how to install one of these bad boys and how it works with all these great technologies. As with any large wiring project, make sure you take your time, read the manual, and figure everything out before you get started, which I did a couple of days ago, and I laid everything out here on this table so I can show you how everything gets hooked up. We've got our audio cables that go straight off to an amplifier. We've got some audio and video cables here if you want to hook up some additional monitors. Of course, our serious satellite radio equipment and antenna. We've got a backup camera here our iPod, and this adapter that hooks straight up to the wiring harness on the back of the stereo, which will show you how that works next. First, you need to remove the stock stereo, and on this Ford, it's pretty easy. All you gotta do is open up the cup holder, put two fingers underneath the surround, and pull on up, it kinda pops up. Now we need to disconnect all these climate control cables back here. Disconnecting the cables is pretty easy. You just push in on the tab or pull up on the tab depending on which one and they easily pop out. Once all the cables were disconnected, I used a 7mm socket to remove the four screws to hold the stock radio in place. And there are two more that hold the tray in place. Now once those screws have been removed, the stock radio slides right out and you can disconnect the antenna and the wiring harness. Then moving back up to the top of the dash, the top tray easily pops out by just lifting up in the front and sliding it forward. And after a couple of minutes and a few screws, your dash is completely open for a new head unit. Try doing that in the Honda. Next, I connected all the cables that I had ready to go for the new Alpine head unit and then mounted it back into the same location as the stock radio using the same four screws. On a side note, I picked up the wiring harness adapter and the dash kit from Crutchfield, which made the installation go a lot smoother. Now you've probably noticed that I used a lot of these wire nuts initially in my installation, and that was just to test to make sure that everything was connected properly. But once you've tested everything out, the best thing to do is to go back later and use these splice connectors or use a soldering gun and do it right, because there's a lot of rattling underneath this dash, and they will come loose eventually. And finally, I needed to find a place to mount the antenna for the Blackbird GPS navigation unit. I found a spot right in front of this tray, right on top of the dash. Now the Sirius satellite radio antenna is pretty easy to install. Once I figured out where to install it on the roof of my truck here, I used the self-adhesive backing to stick it on and I routed the wire along the top of the window sill down the A-pillar behind the weather stripping and then down here behind the front fender and then back up on the back side of the A-pillar on inside the truck, back over to the stereo. Now Sirius has a whole bunch of great installation videos on their website for your particular truck or vehicle, so check out their website for more details. <coughs> One of the other really cool things about the Alpine IVA W505 is that you can hook up a rear backup camera, and we picked up this one off of eBay for about 80 bucks. And since the truck's lifted, we don't have a spare tire anymore. And as such, we don't need the spare tire lock anymore. So it's a perfect place for this cam to go. So let's see if it's a good fit here. Looks like it is. There's some metal on the top and the bottom here that we're gonna have to shave off. But before we do that, let's hook it up and see what its viewpoint is to make sure that there aren't any obstructions in the way. All right, I'm gonna put this in place now and see if uh, we've got an obstructive view. Make sure that this bumper here isn't in the way. Now 
as difficult as it may seem to install a backup camera in the bumper of your truck, it's almost just as tricky to snake all these cables from the back of the truck back up to the head unit inside the cab of your truck. I did this by snaking the wires along the frame of the truck and tying it down tight with zip ties. All the way up to just below the driver's seat, underneath the carpet, there's a grommet. I was able to snake the wires through that grommet and then connect everything back up to the head unit. As you can see, the installation of a new head unit on your truck is pretty easy even with all the bells and whistles, although I did run into a couple of problems with sound from the cell phone not coming through the truck speakers, as well as video not playing from the iPod. But after a quick call to Alpine customer support, they were able to quickly resolve my issues and get me back up and running. Well, that does it for this episode of Truck Blog TV. For more of our videos, go to www.truckblog.tv and also be sure to subscribe to our podcast on Apple iTunes. In five, four, three, two, one. These days, everyone's got a cell phone, an MP3 player. Nice breeze coming in. The gods like when I sing. I'm not an actor. It just, I just play one on TV. Let's play with the Batman. Hello everybody, I'm Chris Duke, and I'm the host of Truck Blog TV, but starting January 1st, I'm also the host of NBC's The Tonight Show. Now in HD. Hit me! And allows their Blackbird UP... <laughs> yeah! Kind of look like Peter from Family Guy. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. It's really not helping, though. Did you hear that? One of the benefits to filming out of your own home, you get to hear the toilet flushing in stereo sound. We have more outtakes right now than we get, than we do have uh, usable footage. Speaking of footage, you're catching me cheating. Not nice. Not nice, Frozy. Truck Blog TV is now available through iTunes. Just go to the iTunes store and search for Truck Blog click our podcast and the subscribe button to download all of our videos to your computer or iPod.